let's get to some fan questions regarding the Minnesota Wild, Kirsten. First question we have coming to us from Michael Sullivan. He asks, what other players would you like to see the Wild call up and give a shot from the Iowa roster? As we just discussed in the first segment, there are a lot of Iowa players currently rostered, but is there anybody that we haven't seen that you would like to see called up? I mean, this is kind of the low hanging fruit that's easiest to say, although like I've had mixed feelings. Jesper Wallstedt is the one we want to see who we haven't got to see. So sure. definitely interested to see what he's capable of and what he can do. So, I mean, that's, I think, the obvious one. And to be fair, we also haven't seen – there's not many players left in Iowa we haven't seen this season. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. I would like to see Ryan O'Rourke on defense mm -hmm. I or Carson Lambos. I think I've mentioned Carson Lambos a number of times. I really want to see that. I would like to see a little help on the blue line. Again, I think Damon Hunt has been good. Dakota Mermis has been good, but I'd like to see those guys as far as defensemen. Um, and then I would like to see Adam Beckman. I know he's been kind of a, you know, a loved one during the preseason for a couple of years. He is hurt right now still, I believe, but I think Adam Beckman for a forward would be nice to take a little glimpse at if they were to, or Nick Sweeney, one of Minnesota's mm -hmm. own um, would be another one that I know has done well during camps that I've, I've liked as well. So give me, give me one of those, but I think that's a good question. Kirsten, what you got? Yeah. Well now Jesse, I have a question for you from offside hockey talk. Some Leafs fans want the flower to be traded here. Is he even on the move? One, I don't know. He's not on the move because this is the final year of his contract. Shout out to Offside Hockey Talk. By the way, James is doing great things over there talking about the Toronto Maple Leaf. So we heart you. Thank you for your support here. Uh, congrats on Willie Nylander, too, and having money to sign players to contracts like that. But anyway, um, no, Flowers not on the move. Last year's contract with the Wild, if he continues to play, I bet he goes to Pittsburgh. I don't think he would entertain the idea anywhere else. Sure, he wants to win a cup. But I, and I also don't think Toronto wants to spend any real money. They could use a goaltender for sure. And Marc-Andre Fleury could be a step up from the goaltending that they have received this year. It'd be kind of funny if Fleury went in and took Matt Murray's job as Matt Murray did for Fleury in Pittsburgh. But um, no, any just ultimate no. Anything to add, Kirsten? Um, also a no. And also I just, especially after hearing about Nylander, just wondering how Toronto has money or Oof. even more money to continue to sign players to big deals. Like 46 That's a little bit and of a half. tangent. Where is this money coming from? Because they have signed a lot of players to a lot of big contracts. 46 and a half million for their core four, I believe, which is Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, and Marner, right? Like, I think that's what I read. Um, no, it's like the Dodgers. They just keep pulling money out of a hat and it's like, yay, we have all this money. I mean, again, you're talking to a cash strapped Minnesota wild squad. So, but is it really worth it. it to spend all that money? If historically you don't make it out of the first round, except for one year, just saying, just I had to throw that in there. Too. Yeah, I know. That's fair. My question for you coming to, uh, coming to us from Doug Phil wants to know, predict what should happen on the February 20th game versus Winnipeg, given the recent rivalry controversy. If you have been living under a rock and are unaware of this controversy, it began on a night, December 30th in Winnipeg, when Kirill Kaprizov was knocked out of the game and has been suffering this injury since then uh, from Brendan Dillon and a couple cross checks to the hip area or to the rib area, what have you. Brendan Dillon answered the call with Jake Middleton. Then Winnipeg comes to Minnesota the very next night on New Year's Eve afternoon game. Right off the go, Pat Maroon and Adam Lowry drop the mitts. You think it's done? It's not done because it turns out Ryan Hartman high-sticked Cole Perfetti in the face on the draw later on in the first period. Cole Perfetti claims that that was there was he had a hot mic. It was caught on tape that Ryan Hartman said this is for Kaprizov. Um, and Ryan Hartman now has since come out and said has denied it. Ryan Hartman has been fined for the incident, no suspension. Um, you know, we all know Hartsey here is kind of a hothead, but that's sums up the love that about him. <laughs> it is what it is. So February 20th is the next time these two teams will meet since all of this uh circus has been created. And uh Kirsten, how how do you think that game's gonna go? I don't necessarily think the Wild will make the first move in that game, if anything, 
unless Winnipeg does something. I, based on history, and I'm trying to be careful too, because I don't want to be like, oh, Winnipeg's dirty. I just, I don't know exactly how to describe the situation with the Wild. But I mean, it's a rivalry, right? And just coincidentally, there have been a number of very bad plays resulting in an injured Kirill Kaprizov. I don't want to outright be like, yeah, it was targeted. They're trying to injure our players. I don't want to say that at all because we don't know. But I do think just history repeats itself. I am confident in saying I think Winnipeg will do something else. Wild will answer the call. Also, if in that game you need me to suit up like as a decoy Kirill Kaprizov <laughs> just to protect him and his ribs from any dirty cross checks, I'm willing to sacrifice a rib. That's that's kind of you. That's kind Thank of you. you. He might need one still. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. He's he's on the ice, but might still need one. Just be on standby <laughs> for us. Yeah, if you can. I will. You know where to find me. I do. My whole take on the controversy is I don't like what Ryan Hartman did. I don't like using the stick as a weapon. I think then you're crossing the line into intent to injure. Um, going back even to the Kaprizov thing, it's so funny because it really depends on which team you're a fan of, right? Minnesota Wild have certainly had players in their past that have cross-checked the crap out of a superstar on another team. Now, that is the problem. Min the Winnipeg Jets do have a history of constantly hurting Minnesota's one tried and true superstar in Kirill Kaprizov. So that I understand the frustrations. Um, I think by February 20th, I imagine things have cooled down a bit, not to mention that February 20th game, Minnesota's probably still going to be trying to claw their way back into the playoff. Winnipeg is continuing this point streak. They're at 12 games right now. So they're hot. I don't know if they're ever going to fall off like they did last year or not. So I think Winnipeg might not care. Minnesota is too desperate probably still at that point to bother with getting penalties so i'm gonna guess it's a wash if not it's gonna go completely the other way and have an ambulance on standby right like i don't know it's it's either super hostile or super meh it's there's no in between yeah i agree with that i'm leaning more towards the hostile side though and i think winnipeg will come out first and be the okay. team to start something just again history repeats itself and i hope that if there are some you know, plays that cross the line that they actually get called for once. <laughs> so and again, that goes on both sides. Like I, not to play devil's advocate, but literally when I saw the Brendan Dillon thing, like he's not the first player to do that. He's not the only player to ever do that. Right. And again, it, it's a, pardon my language. It's a shitty thing to do. Like when you're cross-checking someone, not once, but twice, but I've seen way worse done to a player. Like, and you know, I think Kaprizov just ends up getting hit in the right way. Like he's a tough son of a gun. Like I don't think he's soft by any means, but it is kind of, it's just ironic. I think some of it's like coincidental because if Ryan Hartman does that to somebody else, I'm sure wild fans aren't going to be like, Oh, it's fine. Like they're, I don't know. It just seems so. It's a I am. I totally side with you on the Ryan Hartman thing. Yeah. I just think I have a personal vendetta against NHL <laughs> officiating this season, and I'm not taking my foot off the gas on it until something happens for oh. consistency. That's all I'm saying. And now we will move into a question for Jesse. Yes. Um, Jake Berglund, given how bad our injury bug has been this year, would you agree that having the AHL team in Des Moines instead of Houston has really benefited the wild? If you recall, the wild's first affiliate was the Houston arrows from 2000 to 2013. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that there's no question. I always found it odd because Iowa used to host the Iowa hogs, which I think was the Anaheim affiliate. Like they never had anything for Minnesota when it was like, they're right there. It's a three and a half hour stretch down to Des Moines on 35. It's a straight shot. Obviously now they're not always home when you need to make this recall. So sometimes there's still those movie mechanics where they're on the road or you want to do this and that. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it's a huge benefit because I don't know. And I could be completely wrong on this. I don't know that there are a lot of AHL affiliates that are nearly as close as Iowa, Minnesota, like running through my head. I can't think of anything off the gut, but I love it. I feel it. like I Rockford. I mean, it's further from Chicago, but it's yeah, you're right. Still decently close. But you think of like the Milwaukee Admirals and the National Predators, right? Like, yeah. I mean, those are like a lot of them to me in my head, Hartford Wolfpack and the Rangers, I think are kind of close. Like, a lot of them, I think, are at least a, a bigger distance than four like hours. Like a state away. Things. Yeah. But then again, out east, they kind of always do that weird state thing. Yeah. Like, they're all kind of, like, clumped up. Yeah. No, I agree. I think the closer, the better. And I think even talking, like, a different sport a little bit, 
Uh, you look at how close the Minnesota Twins are to the St. Paul Saints, like literally yeah. just across the way. So I think the closer you are, the better it is, especially given the unfortunate circumstances of this season. This season. Mm. Speaking, let's stick on the injury bug here. Jason oh, Judding it. wants to know, do you think when we get everyone healthy that we could make a push for the playoffs or not? Um, I mean, there's always a chance, right? I think... If we do, it'll be definitely a wild card spot. We will just scratch our way in, but we're not winning the cup this year. It's not mm. going to be our year for that, but I think we have a chance to claw our way in, but there's still, we got to just stick it out while everyone's still out. We have to still win some games to be in just the conversation. So there's always a chance. <sighs> I think they miss it this year. And I can't remember. I think I was always on boat with you where it was like, it's definitely a wild card spot. Um, I just, I think they're too far behind the eight ball. I think they really kind of screwed the pooch to start the season out. And why does everybody laugh when I say that? Is that not a term? That it is a weird, I, it's a weird expression. <laughs> I used it on Judd's hockey show last week too. And he was like, huh? I was like, it's, exactly. Do we not- it's I- <laughs> odd choice of words <laughs> I, well whatever i'm sticking with it. they did i mean they're just i think it's going to be really 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 hard especially now as they get into the brunt of the central division schedule and as they get into kind of the meat of it all where they're playing every other night and it's kind of go 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 um injuries or not it's going to be very very challenging for minnesota wild to make that big of a climb um, in their favor and then you need other teams to lose like I said you need mm-hmm. Winnipeg to cool off you need Colorado to fall like you there's other things that have to happen besides Minnesota just winning so no I don't think they make the playoff push yeah it's gonna be gonna be hard but one last question from our great friends the fab five has there ever been an NHL team in the last decade with such a high percentage of active team salary cap out on IR at the same time great question I'm sure there has like Vegas, right? Toronto. I'm sure it's happened. I don't know. I should probably do some research before answering it, but I, I feel like it's probably, again, every team goes through these injuries. Even Dallas had some big names out, right? Calgary had half their big stars out for a while. Florida did when they came to Mm -hmm. visit Minnesota. Like it's definitely not completely unheard of. What doesn't help is when you have that amount of money sitting in your press box. Plus you have that amount of money that is, playing hockey elsewhere and like mm-hmm. you know like Ryan Suter and Zach Parisi that's a lot of money that you're not cashing out. I could I could use some of that money frankly I could too and honestly I feel like Suter and Parisi are making enough money if they want to send some my way just yeah. like as like a I feel bad for you kind of thing I'll yeah. gladly take it pity money or not I'll take it I mean maybe we should since we, we have a, a a lot of stuff to talk about with Bill Guerin at some point here, mm-hmm. but um, maybe he signs us to like a minimal contract of some sort just to, just to pay us like, you know, yeah. To for the vibes. The I can Merrill. bring the vibes. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one final question we have before we end wrap up uh, cues of the boots. Yoshi 450 R would like to know, should we keep Raska in the lineup? He showed so much heart. I thought Mason Shaw was back uh, for those that missed it. Raska had jumped into the lineup on um excuse me saturday against columbus played played more minutes than nick patan nick patan currently scratched right now um i liked it he does have an energy it's a new energy to be completely honest i had no idea who he was when he was recalled um but i yeah i i don't mind it i don't think he's a mason shaw he doesn't have that kind of vibe but it's not terrible yeah we could always use a player that has that dog in him mason shaw definitely had that dog in him so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm okay with it. Yeah, uh, I like it. Let's let's go with that. Uh, thanks again for all your questions. As always, you can comment, drop your cues any point in time. Email bardownbeautiespod at gmail.com. We love the interaction, love the engagement, love knowing what you guys want to know and hear from our Bardown Beauties podcast. 